Okay, so I'm Jacob Loomis, and I was in a group, or I am in a group with Kennedy Patterson and Tanner Milliken. Um, so we decided to do our topic on cardiogenic shock. So cardiogenic shock is a condition um, in which your heart suddenly can't pump enough blood to the rest of your body. Um, it's rare, and it happens in only certain cases when you have another underlying condition. Um, but if treated immediately, about half on average, half of those people survive um, and continue in their life. Um, but still have serious side effects from that. Um, symptoms and assessments. So when you will see someone with cardiogenic shock, it usually is going to be in like an earlier stage before they get to the hospital, but well, you will continue to treat it at the hospital. So some things you'll see is like rapid breathing, um, loss of consciousness, low blood pressure, sweating. Um, a lot of the times they'll be really cold to the touch um, and so this picture you see here is um, an early on uh, assessment of how to treat that person. So he's covering with a blanket um, and getting him in the warmest environment possible. Um, and so, and then he's elevating the feet to allow um, blood to rush back to the heart. Um, and so you wanna check the six vitals um, and treat for shock because um, at that point you don't really know which point of shock it is. Um, but if you can check those six, Sorry, six vitals and check those. Um, that can lead you to cardiogenic shock once um, they, re they reach you in the hospital. Um, causes of this, so there's a lot of causes that can lead to cardiogenic shock. There's a lot of underlying conditions um, that can lead to this. Just some of them are like a heart attack, um, which is the what you see most often. Um, you can see like ruptures of the left ventricle, uh, acute ventricular septal defects, severe congestive heart failure, um, severe valvular dysfunction. So really anything that goes on with your heart that is not functionable enough can lead to cardiogenic shock because your heart doesn't have the function to pump throughout your body. Um, another cause can be an overdose on drugs like beta blockers because um, that affects how your heart can pump. Another rare one that you'll see in another slide here is a gunshot wound, but that'll lead to hypovolemic shock rather than cardiogenic, but it can still cause that. Um, the diagnosis for this, um, we kind of have a quote here, it says altered tissue perfusion um, related to inadequate cardiac output. So that is just what you kind of group that kind of shock into, but the diagnosis is you don't really have one until you figure out what underlying condition they have. And so if it's, obviously they'll be pale, full, and clammy and having issues um, such as breathing and low, very low blood pressure. Um, and so that's where you can diagnose that this may be cardiogenic shock and then, and then you can go and take um, more tests and figure that out for sure. Um, the treatment, the only way to solve, like I said earlier, um, is to solve and treat what the underlying condition is because this isn't a, a something that happens just by itself. There's going to be, um, like, I see, like I said there, uh, there's a gunshot wound is um, a rare thing, but there's always gonna be something with shock that causes it. And so that's on the hardest part about treating um, shock is because you may not know what this person um, is, what's going on. So you almost have to run every single test um, until you figure out um, what's wrong with them. And the, what people would start with is usually figuring out if they have heart failure or not, um, and then go from there because that's the most common side effect. Uh, so the prognosis and follow-up, um, this, is, this is pretty rare, um, but it's a very life-threatening situation. Um, if you don't treat it immediately and um, find that underlying condition, uh, there's that 50% survival rate. And then a lot of times, anxiety and fear levels would be very high with the patient and their family because they, they, you have no clue what's going on until you run those tests, and those tests can take some time. Um, and so the, as nurses, that's kind of the biggest thing that we need to control is just keeping that family um, calm and uh, cool and collected just because there's really nothing we can tell them until all of these tests have been run and we find that outcome. Um, if a patient survives, uh, we need to teach them how to reduce controllable risks of heart disease um, because that is most likely the, the cause. And so things like um, exercising more or going for a walk with their family can severely um, decrease the chances of this happening again. Um, 
in the future, make sure they know how to dial 911 depending on how old they are um, and teach them how to use their phone because a lot of times um, there's a lot of cases where um, older individuals um, die because they're by themselves, they don't have a life alert or any of that um, special tech stuff and don't know how to use a phone. And so they're not found in, until their family gets home and sees them. Um, teach patients how to observe sodium restrictions. So a great way to observe this, especially with older people, um, but also with younger people, is to eat things with a lot of potassium because potassium um, reverses um, that sodium. It, there's, a, there's a chemical reaction with it, but if you eat more potassium, that'll help with your sodium restrictions, which allows your heart to, um, your heart to perform better. And then just monitor the shortness in breath um, because that is going to be a huge symptom in the future if you've already had it. And that's all I have.